So now we understand the characters of the game and we understand the driving goals of the various factions. The two factions being us and the people. So this leads into our pivotal question. What is this game trying to say? And are we the good guys in either of the situations? So perhaps the pivotal question surrounding all of this is, is it moral or immoral to remove the workers from their mind control? It would appear that upon being removed from mind control, the workers simply enter an inert state. They can't act anymore. They have fallen down, limp, lifeless. Whether or not they actually die, it's impossible to tell, but they clearly don't have any form of self-motivation in the terms of they can't move or act in any way. So liberating the workers from the mind control doesn't actually change where they land in the hierarchy of things. They remain a follower and not an actor. But is there any indication in the game of whether or not this state is good? Actually, I believe very strictly there is an indication. In the area where you have the cap on, where it's been removed from its cord and you're trying to gather up 20 individual people, you find the last person that you need is a dead worker found at the very top. How this single worker appears is probably the strongest piece of evidence as to whether or not it is moral or amoral to remove them from this mind control. Basically, we see the worker laying on the ground with the most vibrantly colored clothes of any worker we've ever seen, having what appears to be a sunset cast over his body. Now this imagery is not accidental, this is very purposeful because it is completely different from all the other images in the game. Previously the only even vaguely lively color that we'd seen was the red of our shirt, but now we see this dead worker has its own vibrancy. Basically of all the workers, the one that we can actually identify with, that we view as something more than a tool, is this dead worker. The scene that we come upon when we meet him is one of a heroic and tragic death. And it almost evokes an emotion of sadness for this creature. Based on this image, we can see that the removal of the followers from this mind control net is actually a good thing. It's it's better for these people to be lifeless and inert than for them to be controlled by others. So the game seems to be telling us that the best form for the followers to be in is to be in the inert state, or at least not be controlled by other people. So what does this say about the two different endings of the game? I think that it says first off that by far, the best ending is the secret ending. The removal of the entire system of control that allows the workers to be mind controlled. That is clearly the best situation. But what does it say about the main ending, where we become one with the mass? I think it's a bit of a question of how the mass is to be viewed and what our actual role in the situation is. We have become, by the end of the game, basically a master of a hive mind. We've transcended the system of control that was set in place to begin with, those mind control hats, and have become in and of ourselves a conduit of control over the other workers in the area. Now based on what the game has said about the best state for the followers, this is not necessarily a good thing. We've become the source of control over the workers. We haven't liberated them from their controlled state. Instead, we've impressed upon them a new state of control. But at least for the mass, it seems as though we become the mass. We're not controlling it. We are the mass of the people. 
So in that sense, at least one follower, the mass, has transcended the, the line between follower and actor and actually become its own individual mind. And this is apparent, I believe, in the very end of the game, where we see the mass sitting on the bank of a river in a natural state. And in this situation, we see the liberation of one follower, the mass, to be actually free, to become an actor and be allowed to do whatever it wishes to do. Perhaps the actual issue with the followers to begin with was not that they were being controlled, but that they were being forced to work. They had become something akin to a corporate zombie. A creature that exists only for value to be extracted from it. To mop the floors, to push crates, to work in construction, instead of being able to actually flourish as a creature in and of itself. So basically we found that being liberated from the mind-controlled state is clearly and demonstrably a good thing. And that in addition to this, that the mass may be the only follower to have actually transcended the system of followers and actors and become an actor in and of itself. In the next episode, we're gonna deal with the elephant in the room, that being the player. Who are we? What are we? And do we survive? any of the endings. So until then, of course, enjoy the rest of your day.